What are you doing? What is that? I was just getting a little lumbar support in here. Okay. You're you going to do that more in the podcast, or are you good now? I figure I'd do the whole podcast just sort of like back here like that. Is that good? No, it's probably, well, you probably have to bring the mic towards you. Well, no. I speak up a little bit if that help. I mean, I guess it would help that situation, but you should probably just come straight back to the no, mic. That would be good. I just don't want to wreck my back. You know, I'm only 23. I've got time left. i got to have kids, Eddie. What is that going to do with your back? What is your back going to affect you having kids? Each kid you have, you lose a vertebrate. <laughs> Until you get shorter and Dude, sadder. Yeah, that's why fucking Cheaper by the Dozen. Horrifying movie. <laughs> is that why Steve Martin's walking around like, hey, you <laughs> He's just like legs waddling. <laughs> um, can you actually turn mine up a little bit? I'm yeah, a little you out number of three? I don't know. Oh my god, that's me. It's definitely. Yeah. That's still not me, I don't think. Alright, I'll do a little more scat. What are you turning it down? What no, I'm going up. I can't tell what Oh, let me try number four. None of it's sounding loud. Oh my god, what number are you? I don't know. Oh, you're this one. Alright. That's you, is that better? Yeah, that's way too loud. <laughs> a little All bit. right, school lip Yeah, that's that's good, that's good. All right, hell yeah, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to the interesting podcast where we just fucking move volume levels around. We're just plowing right through this podcast. Nobody heard anything get louder for them, so it was just you <laughs> oh, yeah, scatting <laughs> and me just n- not reacting to it. Do you guys like that? I, it's a shame that that art form, which is so beautiful, is called scat. Yeah, it it's a bad poop. word. It means poop. I don't know if you knew that. but Okay, thanks. Something you know what's in mind. something, uh, speaking of that, that I never realized and I felt dumb and smart for like realizing it, but just realizing it was mm-hmm. in Tarzan, you know, the trash in the camp song where no, I haven't seen Tarzan. Okay. Well in Tarzan uh, the gorillas sing a song while they fuck up the camp of like <laughs> the, of Jane, you know? Yeah. Tarzan's and Jane, you know, Tarzan's, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? You guys. I don't get it at all. Don't they, me. I'm excited, though. It's a lady. It's a lady. Well, I, again, I don't know what that is. I haven't seen Tarzan. So. It's, you don't know what a lady is? No. Is that uh, like another ape? That's not a, exclusive to Tarzan. It's oh. a woman. Okay. Lady and the Tramp. No. Disney. Not that. I'm saying just in general. <laughs> you know Sabrina? Yeah. You know how you're different from Sabrina? Yep. Okay. So like one of her. Mexican? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but they, uh, it's like, um, it has scatting in the song and they're just kind of making, uh, they're, they're making the pieces of the camp instruments and just singing and doing it. Yeah. Um, and they kind of destroy the camp and I rewatched it this time and I was like, oh, that's how they made the gorillas fuck up the camp without making them seem like horrible animals just you know trashing things to do it was it made they made a fun song about it yeah this is like a good idea yeah. honestly <laughs> can you imagine like getting attacked by like a gorilla or even Dude, just they drag tiny... you yeah that's the scary thing is they fucking grab you and they drag you to show like and they'll let go and be like I'll come back and fuck yeah. you up. <laughs> so like getting dr- imagine just a fucking giant gorilla grabbing your leg and dragging you through the forest I be the jungle. What? Yeah, through the forest, the woods, through through the wood, uh, through Sugar Pine short film, the woods. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In the middle of the woods, you just went by a gorilla. Just, <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> what? I well, this is maybe a dumb question because dying is no fun either way. But what would be like the two worst animals to get killed by? Oh man. Um. If you can manage to get killed by a snake, that's one of the worst, Ooh, I think. Oh, yeah. Because especially if you're not getting um, constricted by it. Yeah. Because then you're just getting the shit bit out of you. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is you don't know where it's coming next. You know what I mean? Because they're so fast. Mm-hmm. But what do you think for you? Well, I don't know. I'm not really afraid of, like, watery stuff too much, but I think shark would be the most terrifying for me. Yeah, you know, that would be absolutely terrifying. My main thing is when, uh, whenever people talk about, you know, getting stranded on an island or, mm-hmm. you know, falling off a boat, I would instantly try and kill myself. Yeah. I, uh, here's the thing. I would never do that in normal life, but if you put me in the middle of the ocean, it's like, how am I going to survive? I won't. I want to drown. Yeah. I don't want to even try to do this yeah. i'll be too scared I just, i'm just afraid when i'm swimming and something will bump me so yeah. i off myself right away yeah so that's why i always bring a no. <laughs> bring a gun i was gonna say bring a gun onto cruise ships <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um oh also a chimpanzee would be a horrible death oh yeah dude they about, fucking like, murder you dude what was that like trevor the chimp like eight years ago that tore that lady's face off yeah whatever? wasn't she she fucking she 
was weird with him, right? It wasn't just a normal. I mean, there's no normal pet chimpanzee. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of sexual tension there, and that's why. No, <laughs> actually, though, didn't she like give him wine or some shit? Yeah, and I okay. think like opioids or some yeah, shit. Yeah, you like give that. a chimp some wine, you kind of—I'm not gonna say deserve, but you shouldn't be surprised when it fucking rips your face off. That's my favorite children's book. You know that like you give a mouse a cookie or you give a moose <laughs> a muffin is you give a chimp a opioid, <laughs> he'll tear <laughs> your opioid. face right off. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was like, that's the sad thing, it, is it was the owner of the chimp, I think his name was Trevor, or no, I think it was Travis, and I don't know why the fuck I know the name of a chimp that <laughs> killed a woman 10 years ago, um, but it was the owner's friend who, like, came over, and Travis was just not having it. Oh, it was the friend? I didn't, I thought it was the owner. No, it was the friend, I think. Don't they bite your fingers off? Isn't that one of the things? They just, like, like... Easily. Yeah, dude, honestly, like, uh, we're kind of joking about it, but the 911 call is one of the most upsetting things I I've ever heard. I definitely never want to hear that in my entire life. I mean, life. I'm not going to try to recreate it. Okay, I'll, ah! No. <laughs> no, it's like her, you can hear it, and she's saying, like, it's eating my friend, her face is off, and her, it's eating my friend's hands I don't, and see, stuff. See, this is what well, I didn't want to hear. <laughs> yeah, Tony, we just kind of lay it underneath. The, <laughs> this we're just, is the 911 call. Have you heard of Curious George? <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> he's not curious. He's furious. <laughs> <laughs> it's furious George, except his name is Travis. It was Travis, dude. I called it. Why did I know that? That's dumb. And it was eight years ago, too. That's really... I find that really weird that you knew those two yeah. facts, like, really detailed. Um, And he was... Yeah, it oh was the friend of the owner. I just realized eight years ago is 2010. Yeah. That's weird. I, 2010 was one of those years. 2010 and 2015 always feel like they just happened to me. Because I yeah. remember distinctly those years and seeing the date all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and 2012 a little bit. Yeah. 2013 is pretty, yeah. I get that with 2011 a lot, too. Mm. 2014 sometimes. No, I'm just <laughs> trying to think. 2013, though, like, I actually don't ever, I don't remember what happened that year at all. 2013 was one of the best years in recent memory for, like, media, though, at least for my personal taste stuff, because mm -hmm. that's the year that um, Bioshock, Infinite, The Last of Us, and GTA V came out, which were, for me, some of the biggest formative games ever. The Last ever. of Us came out in 2013? 2013. It was in June. I think it was June 6th oh, or June 8th. That's, yeah, it was going uh, into high school then, because I was going to summer school mm -hmm. and also playing it when uh, I would get out of summer school. Yeah, I totally. I would turn off all the lights in my basement, and I would play by myself. That was like that was really interesting for like game of the year stuff. You know, not that it's super legitimate, but like yeah, like trying to determine game of the year. It's like you had fucking Bioshock Infinite, GTA Five, The Last of Us, and Gone Home came out that year too. Did you mm. play that? That indie PC game, like the the robot one? Or no, that's that's Grow Home. Oh okay. Gone Home is like just kind of a little dark mystery adventure thing in an abandoned house. It's really no, fun. Yeah, I it's played. like one of those like games that's a few hours or whatever. Mm. But like gaming wise, it was a fucking banging year. I'm sure I'll hear more hot games in the comments. Um, but then like The Wolf of Wall Street came out that year too, which is my second favorite film. Mm. And well, I don't know. At this point, I'm just roughing off, but. Lots of good shit that year. 2007 is one of the best gaming years, too. What was that? Um, well, Halo 3 came out, and I believe uh, the first Modern Warfare came out in that same year, too. Mm. Um, and there's there's a, a couple of them. I don't remember all of them, but 2007 is like, pretty famous for some of the most iconic games of that generation came out that year. 2007. Awesome. Yep. Let me see. I'm going to look up what other... Boom. Um, big games. Did the first Bioshock come out in 2007? It might have, or 2006. Bioshock 1. We need a Jamie. Yeah. I noticed if I move the laptop to the edge of the table, it does not... That's a lot better. Yeah. I actually don't hear it in the feedback. I hear it from, you know, real life, but not from the microphones. Yeah. It was 2007. Yeah. So, already, Bioshock, Modern Warfare, and Halo 3, all yeah. the same year. Dude, that's a huge year. Yeah. Also, um... Yeah, there's more of them. There's a couple of Wii games I think that came out that were pretty iconic. It's it was uh people even talk about that the I think it's like the 2006 E3 was like one of the best ever because they were just bringing out everything. Oh really? You remember how? the fucking? Oh, what were you gonna say? Well, I was just gonna say how long has E3 been going on? A long time. Really? It's, yeah, because it started out as just a press thing, um, where it wasn't like a big event for people to watch, but they would still the it was it started I believe as where just the press would be able to get details on games to put them in like magazines and articles okay so they got free press and then the, you know the, obviously those uh, magazines and stuff could keep going yeah because they got details um i was gonna say though do you remember just the bullshit of the selling of connect 
No. Uh, for for Xbox, you don't remember? I didn't. No, I wasn't really tapped Dude, into the news. Like, if you go back and look, when they were trying to sell the Kinect for the first time, they lied so 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 much. Like the first E3 where they showed Kinect, every single game actually had a TV on stage with a fake Kinect. And then they had actors trying to pretend to act out the pre-recorded footage. What? Yeah. That's no, like horrible. Multiple games, and it's some of the cringiest shit you'll ever see. And then there was also a game called. Um, it was not a game. It was a, a, a teaser for one they were working out, uh, working with, called like, or working on. Sorry, uh, called Milo. And it was supposed to be this kid that you could talk to with the connect and have full conversations with. And then you'd be, he, you'd go like, oh, I made a drawing, and then you'd show it to the screen and then he would pull a piece of paper and it would have that drawing on it and be like, wow, that's really good. Like Dude. super advanced AI. And I was like 12, I think. So I was so excited. And I think it even came out that during the Milo trailer, the Xbox in on camera was off. Really? Yeah. So it's like for part of the shot, not yeah. the full thing, but it was just fully like the connect was just all lies. Oh my God! Yeah. How was there not like a huge lawsuit about that? Well, it's not. I mean, the thing is, for gaming world stuff, if you look up like awkward E three edits, they'll be there. There's yeah. like a lot of them. Like mm -hmm. a little girl playing a game called Connectimals, and she's pretending there's like a baby tiger, and it's like licking the screen, and she's like pretending like stop it, stop yeah. it, in front of just a bunch of adults trying to figure out what the next Halo is. Yeah, <laughs> it's really. And also, they did. I remember it was called. Um, I believe. Project Natal before it was Connect. Okay. Um, and they did like a live TV Cirque du Soleil uh, combination event with it, where it was like people from Cirque du Soleil. That's the correct pronunciation, right? I think so. As far um, as that's what I say. Either way, yeah. Uh, advertising the Connect and doing this big Connect event where they did like crazy performances with the Connect. Mm hmm. It's just all bullshit and stupid. Yeah. Was that girl an actor too, do you think? What girl? Like the little girl in the Connectimals? No, yeah, she definitely was. Really? Yeah, it's really cringy Ooh. and bad. Did she sell it though? Or did she like no, get off stage dude. and Bill's like, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sync up your movements. It was really, it was it was awful. God, that's terrible. Why, yeah, why is it? There's just something about like gaming culture, like especially those events and stuff where like, how do people not get it right? Like, why is there a reason every year where there's like compilations of like, oh my God, here's all the cringy yeah, shit that I happened. Th I think, well, a lot of the time uh, developers want to put themselves on stage mm -hmm. and they're not presenters. So they'll come out and talk about stuff and it's like, hey man, probably just go back and develop some stuff. Yeah. Not saying you shouldn't even try, but it seems like they're, they think, you know, Oh, I can really get some screen time. This will be cool. And then they try and talk about their game and every fucking E3 presentation starts with games. <laughs> they are the universal thing that connects us. <laughs> games. Let us play with friends, enjoy ourselves and dive into vast open worlds that can really uh, fucking bring us into them or something like that. You know what I mean? And just constantly, you know, why do we play games? Yeah. We play games for an escape. And now here's a laser tag game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, the worst one I'd ever seen was at Ubisoft where I don't even remember what year this was. But it was a dude that came out and it was, since it was Ubisoft, he was French. Mm -hmm. But I could you couldn't understand him. And it was a laser. You remember there used to be toys where – you would get one kind of toy that would keep track of score, and then you get two like kind of shitty laser yes. tag things, and then you put the target on your waist, mm -hmm. and you'd shoot them, and it would keep score. And those were what, twenty five dollars? Yeah. There was a <laughs> he it, the dude came out and sold a laser tag game from Ubisoft where it would keep track on screen, and it was like okay, that's kind of cool, right? So it came with the toys and everything like that, but it was a full sixty dollar game. Oh. And the equipment costs money. And you could just what? hear the crowd being like, this is some shitty laser tag thing, and you're selling it for like $100. Yeah. It was so bad to watch them try and sell it, because then they have to have fucking actors walk out on stage and be like, oh, oh, no way, I almost got you. <laughs> it's so fucking bad. I'm Jason Statham for laser tag, you be so <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dangerous thing in my career. Stick around and Trey songs will come out. <laughs> about, <laughs> don't sing about Just Dance. Um, the... I love too with that concept that you have to look like reveal your location by going into the living room to check the score. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, am I out yet? Well, now I am. And I doubt the range was good at all. Yeah. 
it, there's so much shit that happens in video games. Yeah. Um, do, have you been seeing any of the like details of the new uh, Fallout 76 stuff at all? Uh, I've seen that people don't really like it yeah, at all. I've watched a few videos today while I was eating some Jack in the Box tacos that tasted like hot shit. Um, I was watching some on that. Wait, and, hot like, shit isn't good or hot shit isn't bad? Bad shit. They're okay. horrible. Absolutely horrible. All but right. I ordered tacos from Jack in the Box. So I heard I their what curly I fries are really good. But I've never had mm. Jack in the Box other than like a milkshake when you know we came here yeah. months ago. I should have gotten one. I'll get curly fries next time. Um, I was watching some of these videos about Fallout 76 and just detailing all the terrible, like, broken shit in it. And one thing that the guy was like that pissed him off more than anything. I don't remember the video I was watching. But he said that if you want to do PvP stuff the way that you have to initiate it, like you can, you could empty out hundreds of rounds into somebody. Tony told me that, yeah. And yeah, so if you haven't seen this, you shoot another player, and it gives them the option to engage in combat with you. But like, like Borderlands, yeah, like Borderlands. But so you shoot them, and there's no damage basically done to them. And if they decide to accept, they can immediately shoot you back. So, like, if you could shoot someone, no damage, they could go into, like, the VAT system and just headshot you and kill you right away. And Well, isn't it also when you're fighting, it takes way too long to kill people, I thought? That's what I yeah. heard. Is that uh, it's So, I don't think you can, like, one-shot them. Really? But I heard it's, like, you have to shoot people with, like, say you had a shotgun. You have to do... Like a ton of rounds in somebody close up where really? it's still not. Maybe that's if they don't accept and you can still kill them. But I, I don't know. It just one of the things is Bethesda games look so bad now. Mm -hmm. I, they'll get one shot of like grass and trees and people will post and be like, this game is beautiful. And mm -hmm. then you play and you're in an area and you're like, this looks fucking terrible. Yeah. They just for their screenshots and trailers, they just keep throwing in more God rays. Like, yeah. Whoa. Exactly. There's no excuse anymore. Yeah. Their textures are awful. Their engine is bad. Mm -hmm. I love their games. But one thing, I don't know if you heard about this. It came out. They are still using their engine for uh, Starfield and the next Elder Scrolls. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Yep. That's Same such engine. Bullshit. I don't know if I'll buy those. I won't. Uh, I will. I'll buy Elder Scrolls. <laughs> I don't know if I'll buy Starfield. I'm not gonna buy Starfield though. The thing is, like, for people that don't know, uh, I don't even want to. I don't know enough about engines to talk about it. Yeah. But I do like they. It, the more games they make while they're using their old engine, the clunkier their games are. Mm -hmm. And they just keep fucking making them on the same one. And they're like, we like our engine. Yeah, nobody else does though. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't know. I, the reason that I say there's like no excuse is I believe Red Dead is on the same engine as GTA Five. Mm -hmm. They updated that in a way where it seems like a completely new engine, um, but but it doesn't do that shit. The same game, it like Fallout Four, doesn't feel like it steps above Skyrim. No, in any not way. at all. If anything, it feels like it steps below Skyrim. Yes. Um, to me, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Especially when you can mod the shit out of Skyrim and make it look good too. Yeah. How old is the Bethesda engine? I think they made it for Morrowind. Oh my god, that's yeah. old. I think it's the Morrowind en engine. The creation engine. Yeah, no, no not the name of it. I mean, like, they made it for... Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just reading. The creation engine is from... Is there no history thing? Just tell me fucking Wikipedia. I don't know. Did you Google when was the creation engine created? Oh, that would probably be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm double handing this BZ. When was the creation engine made? Boom. Um... I'm not seeing any answers here. Right. How could I find fucking Travis the Chimp instantly? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I couldn't find this. I believe they made it for Morrowind, and I don't know what year Morrowind came out, but that's a long time. That is a long time, and so it would be like a few years before Morrowind came out because they were working with the engine then. Yeah. I'm just going to search Morrowind. I should not have to do this. Fucking get on Travis the Chimp level here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Bethesda? <laughs> um, yeah, Morrowind came out in 2002. So... Theoretically, this engine was made in the 90s, right? Yeah. Well, well, possibly in the 2000s, but yeah. still like early 2000s. So still Jesus. with technology that was made in the 90s. Yeah. So, Ooh. yeah. I mean, I know you can keep updating engines, but I think usually companies at one point just go like, all right, fuck it. We got to make a new one. Yeah, seriously. Especially when you have that much budget. Like, Yeah. I think the main thing is they have that much budget, but they want to keep their team fairly small. Mm -hmm. So then they can't do a lot of stuff anymore and i think it's really starting to bite them in the ass 
um, right now. That's a good point. Can you just outsource like the engine creation, or I just I have no clue. How I don't think so. With that, yeah, because well, it would have to be like handcrafted by them, and I think they only have like a couple hundred employees. I think mm. they have like four hundred employees or something like that. Damn, and I love too that in the scope of like the game stuff, that's like that's not a lot. You no, know? yeah. I mean, the thing is, that doesn't always equal good games though. You look at fucking Bungie and Destiny. Yeah. God, rest in peace. Rips. It's one of my favorite developers ever, and they're just gone. That's a sad day. We should move on from video games. I feel like people are going to be fucking... Not, not, some people are going to like it. Some people are going to be like, hey, I don't know what the fuck Morrowind is, or I'll, I'll talk about Travis again. Yeah, <laughs> no, just the whole single one. Um, Back to the animal thing, though. Um, what do you... Th- do you, did you think of a, a another bad one to get killed by? Um, well, I mean, anything with water is honestly going to be terrible for yeah. me. I think... Um, Oh, maybe one of those like a poisonous thing that where the poison just eats you out or something like a snake, what? like you already said. If mm-hmm. it's if it's the poison that kills you, like yeah. the bite. Oh yeah, because be aren't terrible. those extremely painful? Yes. When, which you know, just let it kill you. It doesn't have to sting that much. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. fucking poison me and let me go. <laughs> just let me go. Let me down softly. You know how it be. <laughs> Um, you want to take a peek at a question or two here? Yes. Okay. Let's take some questions again. Follow us on Twitter at Gus Buckets and at Eddie Burback, and use the hashtag, which I just, I literally just tweeted. I was like, don't respond to the tweet. Use the hashtag. I saw 43 responses right <laughs> before we started to do this. No, I'm not reading those. I'm not going to no, look actually at those. Don't. Yeah. yeah. Like don't tweet at them because it fucks our notifications and it will not even be seen. So even if you make a dank joke out the yeah. window. Well, unless they... Well, you, you'll be able to see it. They might have used the hashtag, and it'll still show up. Oh, but, fuckers. But if it has, like, at Gus Buckets for the reply, don't. I'm not going to. Out of spite. Out of spite. I we hate asked them. you specifically. I hate you guys so much. I swear to God, just because you're trying to give us a question to give us more content and be involved <laughs> in the community, <laughs> fuck off. Um, at Morin, Morinita asks, what jobs did you have before YouTube? I think we've talked about this before, so we maybe keep it brief. But we had very similar jobs. Very similar. I worked. Uh, I managed at you know by the end a concession stand at a water park that was contracted by a local Italian restaurant. So it was basically like working, kind of half of a, a pizza place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was hot, and it was you know greasy and kind of shitty. But I love that job. Yeah. It's, it, I have great memories doing it. Bada bing, bada boom. I had lots of jobs and stuff. Most of my time was spent in food service, though. Oh, I also worked at AMC. That's just a small thing. Oh, yeah. The that, movie theater. That, I wanted to do that when I was growing up. Like, So did I. It's not as good as I thought it was. Damn it. Be. Okay, I feel better about it now. Um, I mowed lawns for years when I was in middle school, and then I worked at a pizza place called The Pizza Place for like four years. Hmm. I worked at a bistro making sandwiches. When I went to college, I did video work for the college, and I washed dishes, which was disgusting, and now I'm here. Mr. BGS says, do you boys like kissing girls? <laughs> dude, every day, dude. Dude, constantly. Dude, you, it's hard to find me not not kissing girls. You guys can't see, but off camera here, we have like lines of girls ladies, lined up. Ladies, ladies. Please stop please, it. Please, come on. We're trying, to record the, we're trying to record the podcast. The audio is getting be, in. We said be quiet. We're recording the podcast. No, I don't mean be quiet. As in, I did not mean to disrespect you as a, wim- oh, as a woman. I'm just saying, hold and we can kiss later. Thank you. I'm just, I don't like anybody. Women, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Always jumping over fences and diving <laughs> at people. Always trying to uh, trying to kiss me while I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a quickie. Uh, at Cyric Les asks, what kind of camera, lenses, and mic do you guys use? Dude, I couldn't even answer this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not good gearheads. Yeah. We're using two Lumix GX85s. We're using road broadcasters for these individually. I use a Canon 70D for commentary stuff and the Lumix is for sketches. And I use a blue snowball for any like mic'd stuff that I do. Um, I just use a 70D for my comedy commentary videos and uh, a Blue Yeti for the microphone. The Blue Yeti microphone is so fucking good for its price. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're If you're a poor boy... Then I'd say go for that. And if you're going for a little more quality, it's one of these babies. These mm-hmm. are great. I love these. These are great. Literally, we've had to, like, we have had the opportunity to be able to change stuff, but they were easy. Just plug them in and we just didn't have to do anything. And yeah. look how goddamn good these sound. Yeah. I still, I really love the color scheme with these. They mm-hmm. look great. Robo dicks. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's Hold they... on, ladies. I'll kiss you later. Let me <laughs> pretend to suck this mic. This is a good one. At Zork's Glute Room asks, what was the most um, piece? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to condense it into better language here. What was the most embarrassing project you've been a part of? Like video project. Um... I need a second to think about I'll, that. You seem like you have an answer this one. Going through a Midwestern Wisconsin film school, dude. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. many of those fucking... Like, I regret so many, like, student film helping things. Oh, yeah. Like, you should be very wary. If you are asked to help out on a student film, assume you're going to stay there for longer than you intended. Assume, triple the time. Triple, at, at least. At least, yeah. <laughs> And assume that it's going to be a long day of standing around where the people who are in charge are not doing anything to, like, they're just confused. I guess we could do this. And it's like, did you not fucking plan it? We're all here. I had to do one about, like, uh, in college. Um, it was like a, <laughs> a college party was the big, like, central theme. So this dude had, like, he was like a friend of a friend. that I And I waited and worked on it. And I was on screen. And the dialogue was just terrible, and I did it, and we spent, like, nights in this genuine, it was like a frat house basement, so it mm. was disgusting, and there were too many people on board, and it's like, dude, you're the fucking director, do stuff, you yeah. know, like, it goes so long, they suck, student films suck, mine sucked when I was a student. Mm. I now just tried to stuck. avoid them then, yeah, because there was the time leaving high school where I was like, I feel like I could make a good student film, and then I saw student films, and I was like, I don't know if I've seen one of these that are good. So yeah. I was like, maybe I'll just skip out on film school. <laughs> you know what's so weird, too, is like, no, nah, never mind. That was going to be super pretentious. Well, now I have to fucking say it. But like going through, especially at least in my experience, when I saw like so many other projects, a lot of the film stuff that we did in our, in, like in my school, was people submitting tons of short work instead of like bigger projects. It okay. was like, we're going to learn a camera practice. So like today, focus on movement where that where, seems stuff way like better that. and yes. more entertaining yes more practical like oh focus on match motion between shots focus on rack focusing between shit Is so rack I, focusing when you um you zoom in on you know titties you guys like that one right <laughs> hell yeah girls over there where are you going what's up Why'd they, did they get out of the fence or <laughs> <laughs> It's a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but so like, I would see so many more projects as opposed to like just bigger ones. And like half of the people would try to go for like humor sometimes. And it's not even just me sitting on some comedy hill being like, that's not funny. Mm. It was like, th this is not funny to anybody. No, oh, yeah. Like just so many people just don't understand like how to make something kind of funny. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know, man. I think it comes from, I think mainly people that even have a small understanding for it, uh, I think just have funny friends and that's how you kind of adapt it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have funny friends, then you don't know what's funny and you put yourself out there. Like props yep. to those people for doing it. But that actually reminds me one year, um, I was in this gen ed class. I hated in college. It was, uh, it was world mythology, mm -hmm. but we got into it and, uh, the professor was like, okay, like I have a different course on Greek and Roman mythology. So we will not be cover covering any of that. What? We will mainly be covering like Eastern mythology but not it wasn't even like uh, like Chinese stuff because that'd be cool. Yeah, it was like some like weird European shit the entire year. Uh, I did not like it at all. How do you make mythology boring too? That right, sucks. You'd think it would be really fucking easy, but it was like we're reading original texts in this class. We're not reading like new stories. Mm -hmm. So you'd be reading like something from the fucking eighteen hundreds, <laughs> and not even that. It would be like the fourteen hundreds or some shit like that. Yeah. And you're like. I can't read this. This is awful. Mm -hmm. But um, there was one where the the professor, who I did not like at all, one was small thing. I don't know if I've ever mentioned him before. I will not, you know, mention his name or anything. But he was so like, you had to be uh, like a goody two shoes student. Yeah, every student that it's a college course. Tony and I skipped a class, and he before we walked into class stepped outside with us. And had a talk with us about showing up to class because we missed one. Oh, my God. And I was so furious because it's like, I'm paying for this. Yeah. And I'm an adult. So don't fucking talk to me like I'm a second grader. Like, we really need to get that attendance up. I will come when I want to. Yeah. And especially he docked people for not going to class. I knew I wasn't going to get points for the day. I accepted that because yeah. I didn't want to go to your shitty class. But um, he was like... At the end of the year, we had the last um, mythology story we had covered. He was like, there's this final project where you can write a paper or you can make a video. 
And like just for the example, like I had these I had these two students uh, two years ago. They were class clowns. They were so funny, and they made the project recapping and recreating this mythology story. Mm -hmm. So we're going to watch it today as an example, and it's so funny. <laughs> it's so insanely funny, and it was genuinely the worst thing I've ever seen. Really? It was so, like, as in, worst thing I've ever seen is in, two, like, people making something. Mm -hmm. It was so painfully unfunny where, you know, it was almost like, no joke, Fred humor. Oh, yeah, like you, you, just dropped you guys know what I mean. Like, you, yeah, <laughs> the F bomb, yeah, YouTube Fred humor. If you guys don't know, know what I'm saying, like some old 2008 YouTube humor shit. Yeah, and it, it was made in like fucking 2016. That's a rough sell. Is that yeah, 2016. So it was just fucking terrible. And I know what you mean when you're sitting. I'm glad they weren't in the class. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that bothered me is. A couple of us like really hated this professor. I was never mean to him or anything yeah. like that. Just roughed him up uh, in the halls yeah. a little bit. He was Don't such come a to dick, by the way. <laughs> At the end of the semester, I had an eighty nine point eight, and he had a he had a rule that he never rounds up. So I at the like one of the last days, I was like, "Hey, is there anything I can do like for this? You know, it's it's I'm point two away from an A." Mm -hmm. And he just went, "Sorry," and then kept walking. Like Dude. he was handing out tests. Professors, here's what I fucking hate about professors. Yeah. So many of them have it. They have their stupid little fucking rules. I hate it. It's dumb as shit. It's there should be a fucking curriculum for everybody. I'm getting mad because, yeah, the thing is, you know when they give you those rules, there's nothing acting on that force other than the fact that they're like, this is how I should run yeah. my class. I need a thing. Yeah, this so is you have thing. good professors who are like, I just want you guys to learn. I'm going to be pretty relaxed with it. And then you have the shitty ones who, yeah, are just... Like, yeah, the dumb, the no rounding up rule always makes me mad. Where it's Why? like, yeah, you just want to fuck up people's GPA. Yeah. That's, that's the only reason I can <laughs> think it. of. Yeah, and then why, too? Here's what I hate, too. It's like, it's like professors, some of them, many of them, take it as an insult when it's like people would get like great grades. Like, there are the people that do, I don't give A's. Why? Yeah. Wouldn't you want your fucking superiors to look and be like, oh my God, look at all the A's coming out of this department. Yeah. I don't give those A's. I don't know what to yeah. say. You know, like, why do you do that? So, it, yeah, the weird thing is, too, it's driven by, it's not even a career advantage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just their own personal advantage where they go home and they're like, I am a tough but fair professor. <laughs> and it's, I think it's so weird to us because, you know, our main goal with making stuff is like, I want to make people laugh. I want to make people f not happy. I just want to make them laugh. That's it. Yeah. So then to have somebody's main goal be like, I want to make people like work hard and I'm not going to give them an inch. It's yeah. like, well, fuck off then. You know what I mean? You, there's yeah. no reason, especially when you can bounce from a class from one of those professors to going to another one who's just like sitting on the desk, like do whatever the fuck you want today. I just want to teach you it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can listen. You can. I love when they're like, yeah, if you don't care about this course, maybe drop it for something else. I'm pretty relaxed with the grades, but you're here to learn. Mm -hmm. I love those professors. Yeah. I learned a lot from them, even though I don't love college that much. But mm -hmm. You know, the ones that are strict, I don't remember anything they quizzed me on. I don't remember anything they taught because I didn't like them. Yeah. No, that's so true. <laughs> there was, I don't want to like out a dude, but like I had a, <clears throat> a situation where I'm going to be super vague because he was a fucking great professor is the mm -hmm. thing. And he was so like diligent. Like he always prepared. He was never like slacking off, but it was in a class that was super, super interesting where we were learning about like kind of the history of video games and stuff. Oh, that sounds awesome. And it was like there were technical applications to the real world and everything. And it was so, so informative. And we got to the end and it was me again, fucking up my schedule the whole year and having to atone for my sins at the end of the semester. And there yeah. was this giant semester long, like research paper that we had to do. <clears throat> And it had to be like 10 pages. It was huge. And you needed like to cite sources and shit. And it got to the end and I was in full blown panic mode. And it was the night before and I hadn't even started the fucking thing. Because dude, I was drowning academically trying yeah. to do shit. Was this while we knew each other? This was while we okay. knew each other. This was to finish off the um, winter, last winter. Because we had talked about the details at the time, but obviously I don't remember, you yeah. know, like what the school stuff you were dealing with. It was bad. Uh, and f the thing is like my grade was at maybe like a D plus. Yeah, I remember you, you sharing your grades before finals and me being like, holy shit, like, dude, you gotta, how? Like, there's gotta be a miracle here. That's the thing is, how? Yeah. How did I pass that stuff? I don't, I don't know. Like, genuinely, Cause like, I don't. Yeah, because I was like, right on the barely blipping up into like, I'm gonna pass, you know, D plus. Yeah. And I, it was the night before this thing was due, and that was, most of my grade was that paper. Holy shit. I typed out 
two paragraphs. It was, <laughs> I think it was about like Fallout 4 or something. I typed out two paragraphs and it was two in the morning and I was on the, I was genuinely about to just burst into tears alone in my room. Mm. And I did control, I c- copied the two paragraphs and pasted the same two paragraphs for 10 pages. And what? then I, and then I just put in random websites to the bibliography stuff. And I said, I'm going to fail this class. And then a week later I got an A plus on that paper. What? And I went to my friend Theo. And I Wait, said, also, what is your rationale behind copying and pasting it for 10 pages? To make it look like I typed 10 pages. Right, worth. but that would piss me off more as a professor rather than getting two paragraphs. Is, does this fucker think I'm that stupid? Or <laughs> like I would. I is, rolled, did you have to hand it in physically? Yes. Oh, is that why you did it? Because you didn't want to have like one page and like set it down? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Because I rolled the dice on the 0.5% chance that said, maybe this motherfucker is going to be so overwhelmed by grading that he'll just kind of skew over stuff. Oh, shit. And I looked at, like, my buddy's paper, and I got a better grade than he did. That's so fucked up, but I love it at the same time. That's great, dude. It was one of those things where I feel bad saying it because genuinely, the whole semester, this dude was such a fucking you can tell he put in his work outside of class you could tell he cared so much about the topics he was such an i was it was so engaging it was one yeah. of the best classes i've ever taken and i won that 0.5 percent gamble thing because he must have just been like i don't know i, I get it get i get it finals is stressful for everybody yeah. yeah but i mean the thing is if he's giving out good grades when he's <laughs> I don't want to use the word lazy, but a little bit like if you're swamped and you're giving out good grades instead of bad ones, you know, yeah. all right, that's fine. I think it's safer to do that because the thing is, if you are like, if you were somebody that would be like, well, I'll just randomly give out like a mid range grade or like a lower grade, you know, cause I just can't yeah. get to these. That's awful. Those are cause if you give one of those to a student too, that works their ass off, you know, they're going to go to their higher ups and be like, what the fuck happened yeah. here? That's almost evil to do. If yeah. you're like that lazy where you gave them a shit score. Yeah. Yeah. Just, Whereas with me, the serial fuck up, if you give me the good score, I go, what? Yeah. And then I don't tell anybody until now. <laughs> so I hope he doesn't <laughs> get fired cause he's a great dude. Yeah. Um, that's honest. I'm going to ask you the question after, which is basically, um, I'll just tell you now so you can think about it is what's the biggest kind of mess curriculum wise in college you had for somebody. And I have one right now oh. is my, my health class. I had to take a health class for my gen eds. That was a lot of, for a community college when I was in it, a lot of the classes were like, really? I have to take a health class? Yeah. Like, Cause it was, I don't even think it specifically asked for health, but there was like a wellness one you have to get where it's either like health or a gym course. It's like, there's no way I'm fucking going to gym in college. Yeah. Um, but for health, it was this um, middle-aged woman is the professor, and she was very sweet, but every test and quiz she ever had was copying answers from – or copying, like, questions and answers in that, that exact order. Ooh. Um, for like every single one of them and they were online. So she took it from other ones. So when I took the test, I would copy the question. I would put it in quotations because when you're Googling things in quotations, it'll search for that sequence of words exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it would come up with like uh, the exact answers from another site. So literally every single question she ever got was not written by her. Um, So I aced all those tests, (laughs) Uh, but I was terrible with the assignments Yeah, because I'm me. Uh, and uh, Tony was in that class too And we were just like Kind of awful with it And also we were bad with attendance Because it was my I think it was Yeah it was my last semester And you remember how fucking done I was with it then mm-hmm. Because t- During that semester I, YouTube had started working out for me as a job So the last two months I was in full fucking mode Where I was like What am I going to do with an associate's degree mm-hmm. You know what I mean Like I'm not going to film school I'm going to do YouTube Which I already know is like Kind of a risk Or is a risk But I was like, this is going to be pointless. I'm not going to be able to pull out my associates anywhere. So I was in full fucking mode. So I wasn't going to class. I was, I did still, but it was like maybe once a week I wouldn't go to each class. So Mm -hmm. I hit like half of them toward the end. Um, and then toward the final, it got to the point where the attendance was going to really fuck up our grades. She said it was like, if you missed, you know, four classes, you cannot get um, a B. If you miss five classes, you cannot get a C. So it was like, I think I had missed six classes Ooh. where I kind of fucked myself. Um, and she had been cool with it, but she's like, you need to do well in the final. And then I'll, if you study and do well in the final, then I'll give you two kind of a pass for it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I study really hard for the final, which is easy because it's health. 
But the thing is, I'm like, okay, my shit is dependent on me getting a good score here. So I went into the class, and she hands out the final papers to one person per four people. She puts us into groups per row Mm -hmm. and is like, we will be asking, I'll be asking each question publicly to all of you, and you'll be answering as a group. So yeah, so it would be like, you'd have to discuss it and then go up and put your answer there. And if you got, one of you argued and one of you thought that it was right and got it wrong, it would affect you. Other people's scores were affecting me. So everyone in the class kind of loudly to her was going like, what are you, what is this? Like I studied, what are we doing here? Um, Because before then it still seemed like a normal structured class. Yeah. So I even out loud was in front of her to other people kind of talking loudly for her to know. I was like, so now my grade is based on four other people that I don't talk to at all. Yeah. And I look and she's looking at me kind of like, like, uh, not side-eyeing, side-eyeing, but giving like a negative look, like what the hell? Yeah. And I looked at her and I just went, what? I don't, I study for this. And then she's just like, let's keep going. And then we took it and, uh, I got an A. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you just fucked everyone. Yeah. It was honestly, it was, it was, uh, I was so controlling over the answers cause I knew I had studied and I had like two people in it that were kind of slacking in the class. Yeah. So I was just like, fuck it. I'm taking this in my own hands. Like there's no way I'm letting other people decide my score for this. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was just so bizarre to be like, okay. She, and she didn't tell us about the groups beforehand. She's like, you're coming in for a final. And then that day was like, I thought of something fun for your final for the entire class. Mm-hmm. Three other people or four other people will be in control of your score. And it's yeah. like, no, not a good idea at all. Oof, that's fucking it's rough. It's a mess, dude. dude. That is rough. I I don't even, I mean, I do have an answer for you for like the worst situation like I've gotten in myself academically. But the thing is, you know more than anybody, I cannot believe that i made it through college yeah it is a it is a miracle yeah i i I just shouldn't have i should not have i do not deserve it (laughs) um like just so many situations genuinely probably the last three or four like end of semesters it has been like how am i going to get through this i don't know how i'm gonna pass this i graduated with like a 2.54 gpa so i did barely get out Mm. but <clears throat> Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares. Especially fuck. when we're in entertainment. Yeah. You wait, you got what? Yeah. Guys, Sorry. can we end the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I only work with 3.0s. <laughs> fuck. Um, I have, I do, I do think that I, I subscribe to the school of thought. There are m- many times you can go with the work smarter, not harder principle. Oh, without a doubt. That's how I got through college. Yes. And that is what has saved my ass. But I have had so many lucky breaks. One of my biggest work smarter, not harder things was I had to take this accounting class and it was just absolutely crippling, like in terms of workload and stuff. Okay. And there was this semester long project, which means most people are going to try to do it in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, I've never, if I was given the option to do a project the whole semester, I wouldn't do it until the last four days. Of course. At least. Of course. Um, but it was this like online quiz thing. It was called like money skill or something. And it okay. was enormous. Like it was genuinely taking some people 100 hours in the semester to mm. do this thing. And it was just online tests and stuff. And the thing is, it was like, huge groups of tests and each test was 10 questions and you could have unlimited retakes on all of the tests but you had to get at least eight of 10 questions right in a test to move on to the next one. Oh, i hate that and if you failed a test you had to fully start it over and all of the questions were sh- scrambled up mm. so you couldn't just memorize it so people were like what the fuck and everyone like went in it and spent like a hundred hours it was, again, the situation where there was, like, a couple days left in the semester. But I figured out, like, they will tell you the right answers in each of the, like, questions at the end of the test. But even though they scramble them up, I know what the right answers are. So I developed this little grid sheet thing on a piece of paper where I would just go, like, for question nine, the answer starts with these two letters or whatever. Mm. So then I would just, like, go, like, it would be, like, question nine, two, A, B, 
So yeah. then I would just fuck up the test on purpose and then go through and do the thing. I did the whole 100-hour thing in one hour. Dude, I did something similar, too. Yeah. One, it was not that big. That's crazy That's that you did stupid. that in one hour. Yeah, but I would do that, too. For one astronomy class I had, there was no penalty for failing uh, the weekly quizzes, and mm -hmm. they would tell you the answers, and you could retake them as many times as you want. So I would just fail, 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 remember all the answers, retake it. Mm -hmm. Online testing for college is the worst thing for education, but the greatest gift to me that could have possibly yeah. <laughs> happened. Honestly, like, one, I, I mean, I just don't think I should have even needed to, I, I did my gen ed, so I got a college education, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think I needed it at all. So like when I talk about cheating and stuff, it's like, if you're getting an actual degree, more power to you, don't cheat. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you want to, do it, I don't care. <laughs> but like for me, yeah, it's like as as many times as I could not actually cheat in person because I didn't have the balls to do that usually ever. Yeah. Um, you know, math tests in high school, I would like give myself like a cheat sheet or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, online quizzes, holy shit, I didn't care. I didn't have to look anybody in the face about having to yeah. cheat. Uh, straight up for my... Um, for my biology class for my last semester, this this one's like a little bit too much, but uh, we it was all on an online course, and the lectures were so boring mm -hmm. because it was biology slides, and it would, the video would start, and it'd be a 35 minute thing, and the professor would be clearly at her house, and she's just explaining biology to us mm -hmm. like this for 35 minutes, and I would be in the middle of the night of you know drinking and having fun and I'd forget I had to watch the lecture and do the quiz <laughs> and my brother and I would just have to sit down and listen to this for 35 minutes. Did she work for NPR? And my, t my, my, my mitosis and meiosis, we're gonna go through that t for today's chapter. And it was like, fucking, I can't listen to this. Yeah. So uh, toward the end, I just stopped really listening to the lectures and just looking at the slides and doing the worksheets. But the test, since it was an online course, you had to download a browser that didn't let you have any other programs. Was it open. the lockdown browser? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Aventus? yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. that Dude. shit. Fuck the lockdown yeah, browser. Yeah, honestly, I hate that shit because it didn't let us cheat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, I w took my classes with my brother. Mm -hmm. So he was in the class as well. So what would happen is I would take my Surface, my laptop, and I would set it up and uh, there was a webcam on it. You had to have a webcam on you for, for the test. That's ludicrous. Yeah, well, the, the thing is they did let you, if you didn't have a webcam, you could be on campus and take the test at the library. Mm -hmm. So they gave you the option. So, yeah, I was being watched the entire time. And uh, so I would set up my phone on the screen, mm -hmm. and I would uh, keep a text thing open with, with Tony. Yeah. And then I would, I don't know if Tony wants me to tell. I don't, he wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. Um, but, uh I would keep the text open, and Tony would sit just slightly off camera, look at the questions, Google it, and text it to me right there. Yeah. Because I couldn't look at something else because I'm being filmed. So I would just, you know, be sitting there. Oh, what? And I'd look toward the t I'm sorry. And I would look toward the test a little mm -hmm. bit more, but I'd really be looking at my phone, and it'd be like, the answer is B. Yeah. <laughs> Click. Yeah, you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, I would pretend to think about it on camera. Oh, huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then I love my favorite parts of it would be where if Tony couldn't find a, an answer and I'd be sitting there for a little too long, so I'd just kind of be like, Yeah. <laughs> like on the side, just tapping, like, Come on, dude. Um, but yeah, we just do that. And yeah. Completely, I ace those tests. I do, I don't know. Can I, I am, take my degree away for That's what this? I was wondering because, like, yeah, I will I will out myself. I have cheated on stuff too. Yeah. Big, ooh, you know. Because the thing is, my rationale, of course, you know, everyone makes the rationale for doing shitty things. But my rationale was that – how do I say this? I believe that cheating is not a black and white issue academically. Mm -hmm. For myself, my principle was if I am in direct competition with absolutely no one – and if I am in like a class or a situation where it is just a complete hurdle roadblock to what I am trying to do, I am going to be more inclined to teach to cheat on shit. Yeah, because I mean, with what we were doing and the degrees we were getting, I mean, I was getting a plain associates. You were getting a digital media degree, right? Yes. There is. We're not knocking anyone out of a slot because we're doing yes. it. You know what I mean? And especially like I to be honest, I only went to community college so I could try and get a job in entertainment on the side and have people not think that I was like a failure just mm -hmm. living at my parents' house. So like when I talk about that for education for cheating, 
I didn't have any faith in what I was going to get a degree in. I didn't really care. It wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. I was just doing it to kind of get people to not pay attention to me. You yeah. know what I mean? No, that's so, so yeah, true. That's, I mean, that's why I'm kind of cool with it. But yeah, like, that's the thing. Yeah, honestly. If you're going to be a doctor, don't yeah, cheat. Yeah, don't fucking cheat. Because you'll kill somebody. <laughs> like, look, I went to a small Midwestern film school, if you could even call it that. It, it certainly was not a fucking film school. And it's like I was not competing with anybody. And yeah. the things I'm cheating on... It's not taking opportunities away from other people. Like, it's like, yeah, maybe I want to, like, have a couple notes in my fucking art history class, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, what is that going to do? I'm not not even close to ranking at the top of my class. I'm not taking scholarship opportunities away from people. In my mind, unless someone can prove me otherwise, absolutely fucking victimless. Yeah, I mean, tell me. You're the only one on the line for the consequences for that. Yeah, tell me in, in any way how there are any consequences to me not knowing biology 101. Yes. I don't know. I could not tell you any issue with it at yeah. all. And also, I would I would sometimes cheat to get a C- in a class. Mm. Genuinely, I did not I don't think I had a single A in the last 2 years of my college yeah. or B, let alone. I will say also in us talking about uh cheating on tests and stuff, never plagiarism. No, never it's done. never. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's just shit like just I don't making know, sure the people fucking know. quiz answer. Yeah. I would never that's another thing. Victimless. I would never take the work of somebody else ever. Yeah. It's just you taking a test or a quiz or something, you're like, I don't fucking know what skin cells are made of, you know? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. why do I why do I care? Yeah. You know? Exactly. So yeah, we're not ripping articles and shit. But. Yeah. I mean the thing is the the point to go for it is like, oh, you're paying for a degree, you might get all the knowledge you want to out of it. That's not why I went to school. Yeah. I di- I went to community college. I barely paid for the degree because not barely, but you know what yeah. I mean, it's community college and it was for no point. And so. and to even like I just thought of a devil's advocate thing somebody could say too, and I'll head you off right there. They could say, if you're getting the training for a job later on that would require the training for it, then you are cheating your employer out of learned skills. Right. To that I say, what "What job am I working for? I'm in my living room. I, we bought this online. What fucking job am I doing right now? (laughs) Even if I worked on like a film set or something like, which I would love to do. Yeah. What? They don't give a fuck if I cheated on my bi- biology test. They don't. I mean, to Unless be honest, on a film set, they don't care if you cheated on your film class yeah. test. <laughs> they don't care. It's can you make good shit? That's what entertainment is based yeah, off of. It, it's just all these fucking hurdles and roadblocks. And for me, it was even more frustrating because I've been doing YouTube like full time for a few years now. Yeah. So it's like at that point, the only reason I graduated was because I, so I didn't have to go home to Thanksgiving and have like relatives be like, you really should graduate. Yeah. Well, I, I have my job here. I don't know. You should. Gra- I didn't want to hear that for 20 fucking years. Yeah, exactly. I did it because of family pressure. I finished. And I mean, even when people were being supportive and shit, my parents were great. They're like, I totally get that you're under a lot of stuff. They're like, we hope that you finish, but we love you and accept you either way, mm. which is great. But it's just like, yeah, I'm in this far. I want to justify the support that I got from the community and support that I got from yeah. family. And just fucking finish. Yeah, exactly. I'm fucking going to cheat on my biology shit. You know? Yeah, no, honestly. <laughs> to use I mean, example, it was the yeah. same thing for both of us is we were ready to leave and we were ready to in six months. Shit, yeah, right. In six months, move to California. Yes. So it was like we were both gearing up to, oh, these are our jobs now, and we're moving and leaving. So is it really going to break my heart if I didn't legitimately get my associate's degree for one test that I did? Yeah. You know what I mean? And There's it's not no like way. we were going around to other people be like, fuck you guys. It's like we were silently to ourselves just doing that. And then still – it would like show up to class and like be engaged and like do shit like face to face. Yeah, and so, also we're saying this. I didn't cheat on everything at all. Even not even close to it. Oh, I'm just talking about little, like online yeah, quizzes little, and little stuff teeny like scraps. that. Yeah, and then I'd say the biggest one was my biology test. Really? But still, because yeah, that was like a test. Yeah. Test. Mine was just online quiz shit. That yeah. Was a, yeah. Um, which everybody else was fucking doing too. Yeah, I think the thing is we're I think we're playing devil's ad- advocate for what we're talking about. I but know. I, I just want to head everybody. I up. genuinely think. Everybody listening agrees with us. Yeah. I don't think there's a single person listening that is like, what did you guys do? Yeah. Like, let, there's no way. Let he who is entirely devoid of sin cast the first stone. If you're going to come at me, you better fucking be prepared to back up that you never cheated once in 12 years of schooling. Yeah, you better judge us and also dox yourself so we can look into your info and make sure you've done <laughs> nothing wrong. How much are we just shitting on people this podcast? They don't exist. We're talking to people that don't exist because they're not going to be upset. (laughs) That's a good point. Um, That's a good point. The the quick answer after both of that ramble, though, is like the worst single situation I got in was the last um, semester or the last year of college. I took a comics class. 
that I passed, long story short, I didn't turn in anything in the entire class and it was the last week of the class and I hadn't turned in anything. And I went to the professor who I was always nice to and I would like talk with and stuff. And I went to him and I just said, here's the situation I'm in. I can turn in some of these things if you'll accept them. I said, I do not want to like sound ultimatum-y, but if I, if I do not pass this class, I probably will drop out of college. And that was not just an empty threat. That sounds shitty. No, yeah. That sounds fucking shitty to say. But I just said, like, here's the situation I'm in. I might have to, like, drop out. And I just kind of outlined everything, too. I, like, I brought in kind of, like, a little presentation and just said, like, I'm already working on this other stuff. Yeah, like, well, I have really quick to up. give the fairness for you just to clear it up for everybody else. Mm-hmm. You were coming to this person because – um, for weekends and weekends and weekends in a row, you were traveling for your current job while you were working. Like you yes. were doing YouTube stuff while you were going to school to get a degree for YouTube stuff, basically. Yes. I, I figured it out actually Every, um, from January until May when I graduated, there were three weekends in that whole span that I did not fly across the country for work stuff. Mm while being in college, while taking more credits than I needed to, while being the lead in the school play, bing, and while doing my own little YouTube full-time. At that point in time, I was uploading every other fucking day yeah. and doing that. Rise and grind, boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like I just sat down with this guy. I was like, I've been working my ass off. I totally understand the situation you're in. I totally get if you can't pass me. Is there anything I can do because this is the thing? And he passed me. Yeah. I, this thing is – I like when professors are human beings about it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Especially, I mean, I'm sure he gets, is it he for the professor? Yeah. Okay. I thought you said it. Yeah. Um, it's really probably rewarding for a lot of people to take that comics class and find a real passion for it. And mm-hmm. I'm sure like that's where, what he gets joy out of. So it's like, you clearly weren't, gonna do that and it's like it's an art school so i'm sure there are a ton of people that are like this class changed my life and Mm -hmm. like props to that guy so it's cool that he gave you a pass it's like all right comics clearly isn't his thing yeah and the thing is that guy was a wonderful guy super nice really interesting great artist and again with all this shit i'm not showing up to class and like being like fuck i didn't do it i was constantly embarrassed like he'd come around and do it, be like, did you do your work? And I'd say, I'm so sorry. I, I don't have my work. That is the, I'd say the best thing possible about not being in school anymore is the guilt of professors. I liked of not doing their work and having yes. to tell them yes. it sucks. Cause the thing is I encountered so many just wonderful professors. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in the classes where I didn't really learn, there's a fucking siren yeah, out there. Yeah, it's coming through. <laughs> they heard us. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, the, the police coming. You, you did what in my algae test? <laughs> it's the fucking clip of the FBI bursting in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the whole thing, though. Is like, I don't know. We talked about a lot of cheating shit. Yeah. What time are we at right now? We've been going for 57, 53 oh, hell minutes. Yeah. We can go a little bit more. We got a couple we got more, more questions. questions. Yeah. Have you ever pooped so hard you took your shirt off? Asks too much chook chumber. <laughs> they took my shirt off to no to poop? It's kind of a meme. Here's the thing. I'm not going to out someone. I have a friend that does that. Don't fucking do that. Genuinely, he takes all his clothes off. But in public? Well, I mean, at a house. Okay. At, at his house, he'll take off Because I know some people have like a weird thing where they have to like take their pants off and even when they're He leaves them outside too. the bathroom. It's at his own home, but he'll okay. leave them outside the bathroom. If huh. you're going to do that, why do you need to just take them in the bathroom for you? Yeah. I don't know. That's don't, weird. don't do that. I still love you, though. One thing, though, on that topic is just my bathroom has a window that you, you saw it recently. The sun will hit it early morning so directly mm-hmm. that my bathroom in the morning is probably 15 degrees hotter at least than oh, my room. Oh, it's terrible. It's oh. like the second I walk in, it's like a fucking sauna in there. Yeah, I'm I not... I get blinds or something for it. I'm not just faulting that. I'm just saying he cannot do it any other way. Oh, I was just adding that because it was kind of on topic. Oh, that was yeah, like, yeah. No, and like when I, before I shower and stuff, boom, I'm fully I'm fully done, you know? I, t- I take my clothes off when I shower too. That's kind of a weird thing <laughs> about me. <laughs> no, like if I'm doing the pre-shower <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. I gotcha. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, it's every time for him. Stop fucking doing that. Um, here's a good one at Rise the Horizon. Uh, you're walking up to a bar. What's the first thing you order most of the time? Uh, just I just ask for like well light beer usually. Yeah, I do like a light beer. I'll get a Moscow a lot too. Rum and Coke tasty. is one I go for a lot. Those are tasty too. I like a good old Moscow though. I've never had a Moscow out of uh, Moscow Mule out of the uh, the fucking copper mug thing that's yeah. supposed to be out of. The only one I've actually had was when we were at that Samsung party, and it was in the glasses. But yeah. everyone fucking says it's way better in the in the 
mug things. That's the thing is usually I would jump on like shitting on those elitist things, you know, where like people like it's not a Moscow and like usually I'd shit on that, but it's like pretty universally everywhere. It actually that's how compliments the taste is what I hear. Yeah, yeah, and that's how almost anywhere they're exclusively served. Yeah, I thought it was weird because it was one of their main drinks that they were serving. I think there were five drinks. Yeah, and it's like. Well, that one's like famous for it. Yeah, IDK, bro. This person asked like thirty questions, dude. What this the same person? Yeah, the Rise the Horizon. Well, one? we got you, boy. Like, why don't you tell us about today's sponsor? I don't know who. That's a good question, is. though. I I props to them or uh, him or her for trying to like give us a segue into it. Yeah, that was a good. Thank you for that. They're gonna think they're on the payroll now. Fuck no. <laughs> this is another good question from them. I appreciate the questions, but please don't leave fucking 10 of them in the future. That's yeah. just too many. Um, why do good girls like bad guys? <laughs> <laughs> that fucking TikTok edit is so funny. Yeah. Um, even, ah, that's too long. This one just says, in conclusion. <laughs> that's it. Um, ooh, at, you, at James Miller YouTube asks, who are your favorite directors and why? This is a long question, I feel like, for... Well, I'll try to knock it out. Um, I love David Fincher. I love Tarantino. Um, obviously, it's like there's the obvious ones like Scorsese and stuff like that. Like, you mm-hmm. you have to. Um, I really like... Fuck, am I forgetting his name? No, I had the moment where you know a name. But it's Matt Reeves, right? For yeah. Planet of the Apes, yeah. Fucking love him so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and Edgar Wright. Those are the first ones that come to mind for me. Yeah, I'll, my big two is like... I will watch and adore any Tarantino film. So yeah. I really don't really like Jackie Brown that much. I've actually never seen Jackie Brown. It's the one that I always hear him talk about in interviews. And it's like, yeah, my guy, yeah, nobody like, watched yeah, Jackie nobody Brown. Um, I just love Tarantino, dude. I'm unbelievably excited for the man in the high castle. Oh, that's our a thing. That's, that's already. the Amazon show. The devil in the white castle, I think is the working title. It's mm. the Leo is playing HH H. Holmes. The yeah, serial yeah. killer. <clears throat> I'm excited for that. Murder castle, baby. Uh, actually, is that his next one? That's Scorsese's that's next Scorsese, one. Yeah. I'm a dumbass. That is Scorsese. Tarantino. I thought it. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably wrong here, yeah. but then yeah. You- yeah. I'm excited for that. Scorsese's definitely up yeah. there for me, but no, the once upon a time in Hollywood, I believe is the next one. Mm. And it's Leo and Brad Pitt, I think. Oh, cool. Um, which is dank. I am also Edgar Wright. Boom. Yeah, he's great. Best comedy of all time. Hot fuzz. Don't at me. This one just says, pussy, 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 can't you see? That's not. I can't. They left. Nope. That was kind of sexist. Sorry. Not a fan. Oops. Do you, does Gus speak Swedish? <laughs> Fuck no. Dude, honestly, Rise of the Horizon left half the fucking comments on here. My guy. I mean, it is a hashtag, so it's not like. I'm it, cool with it. Yeah. Stick around, buddy. <laughs> um, and all of them are like just fully different too. It's a lot of time there. Oh, right, we um, got probably this is probably one more question then, right? Yes, we got one more question. I feel bad. I've, it's always weird when I like scroll through and there's like twenty where I'm like, no, no, um, yeah. no. And what's yeah, the next yeah. one? That's what I was doing on my phone for the last one we recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why does my dog's pee smell like maple syrup? What the fuck? <laughs> um, this is talking about the Defy stuff. Eh. Um, as a f- okay, gotcha. Okay, at P- Cody P. Rogers asks, as a fellow Midwesterner, what are some hardships or quite puzzling occurrences that have been brought about by your move to California? Um, I would say the biggest adjustment for me, and it's weird, is um just the kind of almost deserty stuff here. Yeah, I like seeing you know green grass everywhere, and it's not here. Yeah, everything's it's, super dead out it here. Was, yeah, it was really jarring when we first moved, and I'm very used to it now. Yeah, But, totally. yeah, that's, like, originally it was it was a lot to adjust to. That's a good one. And genuinely, like, it's pretty stanky and smoky and stuff some of the mornings, too, mm-hmm. um, which yeah, it sounds privileged because we're not on fire right now. Like, yeah. Hey, could we keep it down? Guys, yeah. <laughs> my nose hurts. Yeah, ow. Stop burning your Ouchie. flesh. <laughs> uh, which is, yeah. But, no, and it's, it is – loud as shit it's i i miss pure silence which i definitely had at home in wisconsin yeah i did not have that <laughs> and um traffic does suck ass mm. out here it's fucking terrible and it's it, it's worse than people joke about yes it genuinely is the meme holds up and if you get car sick kind of easily and like you don't have your own car out here and you're just lifting hour-long fucking lift rides in the back seat and stop and go traffic yeah. with a lift driver who's desperate to get to their next fucking ride i'll say yeah sickening I, I don't know what it is about here but even when there's no traffic and i've taken lifts in mul- we both have done it in multiple cities yes only here 
every fucking Lyft and Uber driver slams on the brakes and slams on the gas. Yep. Every fucking ride we have. We didn't have bad traffic going to the Rooster Teeth offices, and we got, I was car sick both, like, there and back. Because they're just fucking slamming. Yeah, it's terrible. Do people know that you can fucking ease into it here? Like, I don't yeah. get why it's not, it doesn't even, it's not an advantage for traffic. No, absolutely Slamming not. on the brakes and slamming on the gas is going to maybe save you a millisecond. Yeah. And not really, because it's going to fucking hurt you. And then lose, like, money off the tips, because it's like, I'm, I was sickened by your ride. Yeah, like, I give worse tips for it, because yeah. it's, like, slamming back and forth. Yeah. I think also, like, I was, I'm probably going to make a meme about this still. Watch me fucking call my shots, like, Big Poppy Boy. Mm. Um, it might be out by the time this podcast comes out. It maybe. might be. Yeah. Don't beat me to the punch. Um, but, like, what I love, too, like, the Uber stuff is, like, I almost... Almost every time I'll tell my driver, like, if I've been here before, because they always ask you, which is good. They're like, are you going here? And I go, like, yes. Yeah. And then pretty early on, I'll be like, I'm, I've never been there before. I know this is my first time. And constantly they'll still ask, like, so uh, is it a right up here? Don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I was actually, I, I was thinking about that recently when, when I came back, or yesterday when I came back from the stuff, is mm-hmm. I should start telling people, like, this is my first time here, I can't uh, assist yeah. you at all. But so many people, even if there's not even a language barrier situation at all, like, so many people do not, they'll s- constantly ask stuff, and I'll tell them, like, not being rude, like, they'll be like, can I go up here, especially when you get closer to the destination, can I go, up? so do I just go in here? Again, dude. I'd never been here before. Yeah. I do not know. I yeah. lived 2,000 miles away originally. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Exactly. These fucking Uber oh, drivers. Oh, I was kind of hoping you didn't say anything. <laughs> we just end the podcast. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but other than that, I do like it out here. I prefer it. Stuff is open late. Mm. We'll do one more quick one. We have, have a couple minutes here still. Um, if you could only list... Oh, at 6565. Great. Um, if you could only listen to one album for the rest of the month, what would you listen to? Just the month? Yeah. So that's good because it's not like a forever desert islandy thing. Yeah. Um, we talked about it, I mean, even with the last podcast, or it might be two episodes ago now. But honestly, I think I might choose the Baby Driver soundtrack because it's so diverse. Ooh, that's a good ex- That's a good answer. Because yeah. I don't like listening to one type of music like yeah. for everything. I'd say, well, clearly, you know, too, I have not been able to shut up about the new Lil Peep album. It's yeah. really great. I would recommend listening to it, but only that for a month. Yeah. That's it's heavy stuff. So yeah. probably something upbeat. Honestly, a movie soundtrack would probably be good. Yeah, because they, cho- you know, they pick and choose different shit. Yeah. I really like the Mystery Men soundtrack. That's really good. And it has All Star on it. So mm-hmm. that's pretty dank. Dude, all, I, unironically, I like All Star as a song. It's a good song. It's a good fucking song. And it's fun and it's nostalgic. And yeah. it, when it comes on, I like to listen to it. And everybody's happy that it's on, too. Yeah. And also, really fun on Rock Band. Drum, really? The drums are the drums on it are really really fun to play. I didn't know it was on Rock Band. And yeah, it's on. Uh, it was on the newer one, so it's, you know you could buy it as an extra one on the newer one. Yeah. Rock Band Four fucking sucked. It was one of the biggest disappointments, and I think the biggest waste of money on um, a video game I've ever like spent. Yeah, you know what's so interesting for me too is like Rock Band Four. I never really played too much of those growing up. Yeah. I did. I did eventually, or like every once in a while, go to a party where it's like, oh, here's Guitar Hero. When I was mm. growing up in middle school and stuff. But I never touched Rock Band, and then Rock Band 4 was, like, my first Rock Band that I'd play. And I was like, am I fucking terrible at no, this game? No, Rock Band it's 4 so is unresponsive. all off-sync. The yeah. Entire, you know why? Why? You remember oh, the Bluetooth shit. Fucking Mad Cats, baby. Yeah. <laughs> the worst controller creators like, or makers of the fucking PS2 generation. Mm-hmm. It, the, when, um, when they were announcing Rock Band 4, they're like, we have partnered with Mad Cats to make all of our instruments. And yeah, it's through Bluetooth. It fucking sucks. And I, when it first came out, I was like, something's broken. Because mm-hmm. we went right from playing Rock Band 2 in the hype for it to playing Rock Band 4, and nothing fucking worked right. Like, you'd be hitting the drums, and it would just miss, 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 miss. Yep. And I, I play expert drums on, uh, on Rock Band 2. And I couldn't play fucking medium on Rock Band 4 because it was all out of sync. Yeah. No, it was terrible. Fucking and awful. Especially going in as the first one, too. I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, am I stupid? Yeah. I, do I have no sense of beat? What the fuck? Also, I want to—I know they're already famous for it, but I want to publicly fucking call out IGN for what they did with Rock Band 4. What? They clearly had promotional stuff with Rock Band 4. They made promotional videos for them. Mm-hmm. And, like, some of their articles beforehand were Rock Band 4's campaign is basically an RPG. And, like, oh, my God, it's so in-depth, and you can make so many choices, and it's so cool for your band. And— it came out, and I think they gave it like an 8.5 or something. Ooh. 
Rock Band 4's campaign mode had less options than Rock Band 2. It was fucking terrible. That's you insulting. Any of the choices didn't matter. You didn't see really any visuals. Even for customizing your character, you couldn't customize your shoes and your pants. It what? was bottoms. For your Rock Band character, yeah. you could only do like hair, top, bottoms. Oh. With Rock Band 4, it was like tattoos, wrist stuff, masks, like different types of jackets, different uh, jeans, like different shoes. And it was like crazy guitars and everything like that. Rock Band 4, like four different customization op- options. So fuck IGN for that. And they, for many other things. <laughs> yeah, they fully sold it as like, this is a great rock band. It's finally like Rock Band 2 again. Yeah. It was awful. One of the worst games I've ever played. That's terrible. That's yeah. just, that's so fucking scummy, dude. And the song sucked because obviously their catalog was out. And one of the things, too, I, you know, like most people, had a 360 and then had a PS4. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the most common thing to do. Um, and they were like, if you have Rock Band 4, you can transfer all of the songs from Rock Band 2 if you owned it and all of the songs you bought for Rock Band 2. But if you have a 360 to PS4, you can't do it. Oh, Not dude. their fault because it's cross-platform yeah. stuff, but I basically missed out on ha- over half the catalog of the game because I couldn't transfer it over. But if I had played that catalog, I wouldn't be able to fucking do it because it was out of sync. Damn. Fuck Rock Band 4. That's bullshit. Switch to Just Dance, honestly, at this honestly, point. Honestly, it's Just Dance is the greatest game of all time. Or Disney. Sing it. I tried Just Dance like when it was getting popular. Not like bought it. I was at a party, and I was already the most awkward fucking high school kid. Mm-hmm. And a girl I had a crush on was like, play Just Dance with me. And I was like, this is my fucking nightmare. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't fucking hit I any of them. I can't do it, it at work. all. I can't do it at all. Yeah, I don't get it. I would be looking at it, and it would be like, okay, do this. And by the time I was prepping, the character was already... Damn, it was like you already had to know and rehearse the song, that's and then it. you did it after. Yes, There's that's it. You only get good once you do it ten times. Yeah. What fucking game is that's that? That's not a game. That's just rehearsing a dance and then doing it in front of a camera. Yeah, it's stupid as shit. And then it's also, and it's even more frustrating because you go into it having not played it, and then your competitor is like a girl who doesn't play games ever yeah. other than just dance, at least in my case. Yeah, no, um, same. And it would be like, and they would just kick your ass and be like, why are you so bad at this? It's like, this isn't fun. Yeah. How is this fun for you? Because not only is it saying you're bad at a video game, but it suggests like, you're bad at dancing. And it's like, I'm bad at doing this. Yeah, <laughs> that's not dancing. Like, what the fuck is that, dude? Yeah. Fuck Just Dance as well. Yeah. Rhythm games, you know what I'm saying? You they used it. to be great, but now... I hate. We, you know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, we peaked at Tap Tap Revenge on iPhone One. Dude, I played Tap Tap Revenge. I played a shitload. There was that. a couple of versions of those. There's a song for it. There's they had their theme song. It was Tap 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 Revenge. I don't even remember that. It was good. Man, early fucking apps were weird. Dude. I know, very weird. Well, well. <laughs> on that note, that was a weird download fucking Angry Birds. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird podcast. Yeah, that was a vengeful, angry podcast in yeah. a lot of ways. Uh, well, usually, people are like, "This feels like I'm just hanging out with the boys." No, it's like they're just sitting in bed. I feel like the guys are mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> feels um, like I'm getting beat up by the boys now. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know what happened. <laughs> Well, thanks as always for watching, I guess. Um, again, follow us on Twitter at Eddie Burback and at Gus Buckets. And please don't reply to the question tweet. Use the hashtag. Well, my dad will beat your dad up. My dad actually uh, was worked out a lot. So when I was younger, I always was like, my dad could kick everybody's dad's ass. So thanks to my dad. Go out there and kick everybody's asses. See her in the shot. Just Go oh. out there. Thanks, Dad. Love you, Dad. Is that to my dad? Can you say it to my dad? Love you, Eddie's dad.